Good day, fellow investors. For the month of October, I would like to recommend three new stocks that I think have all the potential to double in the next 12 months, or perhaps even more. Before going on to the stocks, just a reminder, on this channel we make stock analysis, we discuss macroeconomic trends that lower your risk of investment and increase your returns for better portfolio exposure, portfolio strategies, and investment knowledge. So consider subscribing if you like the topics. Let's start with the first stock that I would like to recommend now, and that's Arcap Holding. What does the company do? Leases aircrafts, they have 1,549 aircrafts, 200 customers, airlines, and the headquarters are in Dublin, which is good for the tax rate. Why am I recommending a company that's in the airline sector? Well, you have to look at this. The expected growth in the industry in the next 20 years is at least double, and that depends on the scenarios. However, Indian market growth airlines is going to grow fivefold at least. People are not going to travel around in buses or trains anymore. It's a huge market. China is going to grow. Even the US is almost going to double in the next 20 years. Airlines faster, more and more travel around the world. Now there are a few cases from the International Air Transport Association. In case of relaxing regulations, allowing more travel, we can see the market quadruple in the next 20 years, which would be a great thing for Aircap. However, in the negative scenario where everybody picks up in protectionism, which wouldn't be good for anybody, so I hope it won't happen, nevertheless, the market would still grow, which is again a positive for a company that leases planes. So the margin of safety is there in the growth. Let's look at the company. Total shareholders, equity is stable, has been growing. However, the number of shares have been declining, which means that the buybacks are very efficient. And what I like about buybacks in this case is that they are made at a stock price that's below book value per share. So any buyback is increasing the value for shareholders. Earnings per share are $6.58 per share. Price is around 50. So we get a price to earnings ratio of 7.7, .7, which is four times lower than the market. My thesis is that as the market recognizes the business model, which is relatively new, airline leasing companies are very new, so as the market recognizes the model, the environment grows, there is more demand for planes, I think that this company will deserve a fair market valuation. And slowly the stock price will rise to that valuation. What happened in 2013, everybody was afraid of a slowdown. Aircap acquired International Lease Finance Corporation, so everybody was afraid of too much debt, of too much growth, however, it was a very, very smart thing to do. So in 2016, you see the dip, everybody was afraid that China will enter a recession, also didn't happen, the market continues to grow, everything continues to grow, except for the stock price, which has been growing for the last year, and I think it will continue to grow at a steady rate for the next 12 months, and we can see easily the stock at 100. Just a quick look at revenues, you can see how this is a relatively new sector, 2007 till now, revenues have quadrupled, earnings per share have tripled, and in the last three years they have really aggressively been buying back shares at or below book value. They are still investing hardly, so the capex is negative, however with the market growth this is expected to bring even more earnings in the future. What I would like to finish here is look at this map from Flightradar. You can see a lot of planes around Europe, East US coast, Japan, however India practically no plane. Africa, there is still so much growth. Latin America, so much growth. And all those areas really benefit from plane. You can go around in other things than a plane. It's not efficient. So there is huge growth coming from India, China, and all those countries, international flying. So I really expect a much crowded figure in the next 5, 10, 20 years. And Aircap is a great play to take advantage of the growth in the environment, especially as it's extremely cheap now. Price earnings ratio of 7.7 .7 compared to a 30 price earnings ratio for the S&P 500. So it's four times cheaper than the market. That will eventually have to equalize. So or Aircap quadruples in price 
or the stock market drops, nevertheless, the margin of safety is in the book value. The second company I want to recommend is another company that Buffett is buying. Two months ago, I recommended Store Capital, which was a good buy, 10% yield that buy Buffett was buying. He has invested 500 million in Synchrony Financial. So what does the company do? They make third-party credit cards, credit solutions, and give credit to customers. So 50 years ago, Buffett was buying American Express. Now he's buying Synchrony Financial. Different model, however, Buffett is buying, so there must be a margin of safety in it. Just look at the financial. Slow growth, however, stable growth, net income stable. What's very important about the company is the huge cash flow. Free cash flow of 7 billion, which is almost four times more than net income. And that's why Buffett is buying, because of the business model. He always loves companies that create a lot of cash, don't need investments, and can reward the shareholder. Growth metrics are okay, loan receivables up 11%, net income up 13%, purchase volume up 6%, average active accounts up 5%, and the third party credit cards have constantly new programs, new, new partnerships, and renewed partnerships. The company also announced a new capital plan, increasing the dividend and increasing the share repurchase. The 1.64 billion share repurchases, that's 5% of the company now. So that's in addition to the dividend of 2%, that's a yield of 7% immediately. If we look at the quality metrics, we can see that 90 days past due customer credit is about 1.4 billion, slightly growing, nevertheless, Look at the funding capital and liquidity, it's a 73 billion. Going back to the 90 days past due, 1.4 billion, so there is plenty of capital in the 73 billion to cover for that. 85 years of history in the company, 52 billion in deposit, 125 billion of financed sales, 72 million active customers, so the company is really big and growing. Look at valuations, very low valuations, 11.7, price to book 1.7, not a margin of safety there, but nevertheless, there is a dividend and the company is still growing. Look at the stock price, it IPO'd in 2014, was very volatile, however, what I see here is again a low valuation and what I see here is a takeover candidate. The huge cash flow will make this company attractive to other companies and therefore we could see a double in value. Perhaps even Buffett buys the whole company because he will be attracted by the 7 billion in free cash flow. So again, a potential double. The third company I want to discuss is a gold miner. Ray Dalio said that if you don't own gold, you know nothing about economics nor history. So gold or and gold miners are an essential hedge to any portfolio. And it's a better hedge when you have a great gold miner that is expected to grow no matter what happens in the gold field. And that miner is Guyana Goldfields that has a mine in the country of Guyana. Guyana is a small country in the northern part of South America. It is a stable country. The last three elections were very stable. They have now found oil fields offshore working with Exxon. So the company will benefit from political stability. So I don't expect any trouble there. Now, Guyana Goldfields has a mine. The Aurora mine that's operating has an extremely high gold grade in comparison to other mines around the world. In total, proven and probable reserves go to 3.5 million ounces. Multiply that by the price of gold and you go to more than 4 billion in gold. The company's market capitalization is below 600 million. Now, what does the company do? Mine gold. It has just started mining gold two years ago, so it's a fresh company, developing company. The guidance is 160,000 ounces of gold at the cash cost of 500 with the all-in sustaining cost with all the additional mining costs of $800 per ounce. The gold price is now around 1,300, so there is a margin of 500 in profit. The operating profit would be around 80 million for the year, divide that by 170 million shares, you get to 0.46 per share. The stock price is 3.39. For a stable gold miner, 
as the company confirms what it's doing, it has been doing very greatly in the last two years, is a very, very low valuation. What happened? Why is this a buy now? Well, as soon as the company confirmed the grade, started mining the mine, stock price went up to 7.7 .7 almost, and then it started dropping. So it, you can see the straight drop line. This is because the market doesn't like volatility. And what happened is that in the first two quarters of this year, the company mined lower ore grade, and they expect an increase in head grade in the second half of the year. Also, all-in sustaining costs are expected to be lower in the second half of the year. So as soon as the company confirms the higher grades in the second half of the year, I expect the stock chart to turn up. Another point is that the company is expanding the mill. So they are increasing the mill from 5,000 tons per day to 8,000 tons per day. So that's 60% increase in expected production, increased in recovery. So and they expect that project to complete in the first quarter of 2018. So from 2018, we can expect much higher production. The mill expansion is on schedule and on budget, so that's good. Let's see what is the company in detail. 16 years of mine life, net present value of 850 million. That's on a gold price of 1,000 per ounce. The current gold price is 1,000. 300 and the net present value at a higher gold price is around 1.2 1.4 billion so that's double the current market capitalization the mine will be mined through 2024 an open pit then it will go and underground so there are 15 years of more expected mine production what you can see is that the cost total cash costs from the mine are expected to be very very low which makes this a very safe investment. You can expect cash flows no matter the price of gold. Here is the complete mine expected life and you can see an average production of around 200, 250, up to 300,000 ounces of gold. An average of 225,000 ounces per year and I have made here an example of what we can expect from 2018. Revenue around 292, 292 million coming from 220,000 ounces mined, cost of revenue, half from the all-in sustaining costs, that's gross profit 146 million, take off the sales general and administrative expenses, take off 20 million from depreciation, the interest expect, expense they currently have, other operating expenses from exploration, and we get the total costs and expenses of almost 100 million. Take off 27.5% in taxes, and the royalty, thus we are at a net income of around 70 million or per share 0 0.4. 0 0.4 dollars per share for a gold miner with expected production of 15 years is very very low. I expect a price earnings ratio of 20 on it and the share should be at around 8 dollars, not the current price. So that's my expectation from the situation as is. However, as it is a mine, let's dig deeper. The Aurora gold mine has a lot of resource growth potential, so they could expand that production for more than 50 years. There are also brownfield exploring the zone around. We can see here Aroma Marupa close to the Aurora gold mine, and there are also 23 meters drilled with almost 5 grams per ton. That's double what is mined now. So if they found something new there, it could be very profitable and increase the production for the mine. Then their mine is in a mining district. They have more licenses to drill. So they could find a new mine as they have found this one. They have a sulfur rose. It's their target. And the grades there also show that it could be a new mine in development. So if they develop another mine, then you can expect a double in stock pricing from 8 to 16 even more if gold prices increase then we are at 50 or more so it's a huge huge potential and the margin of safety is in the low cost mining to conclude if you want a margin of safety investment then it's better to invest with Seth Klarman and the biggest owner of the company is the Baupost Group, Seth Klarman's hedge fund. I think this month we have very, very great stock picks. And let's finish with the comparison of where do these stocks fit in our 
investment table. Guyana gold fields comes at the top as the potential upside is very high and the margin of safety is also very high because the gold is there, just has to be mined, good jurisdiction, growth is expected, so very very interesting gold play. Even better than Amira. Then RCAP and Synchrony Financial are good companies, however a little bit worse on our table. Nevertheless, there is a margin of safety, the companies are stable, the risks are there, global recession or US recession. The risk for Guyana is low gold prices. Nevertheless, I think those are really really good investments, especially for a well diversified portfolio. Thank you for watching, don't forget to click like, subscribe, subscribe for support and I'll see you in the next video.